Happy Easter, everyone. Welcome to CRCF Church. Hey, we're back in the worship center. We are so excited about that, and I'm so glad that you're here. If you're new to our church, a big, big welcome. If you're visiting just for the day or checking on the service, thank you for joining us. For everyone who's been with us for many, many years, we're so excited to be back in the worship center. We've done some upgrades. You'll see them in a little bit, but hey, Today is all about what Jesus did on the cross and resurrecting from the grave. He is risen. Oh, didn't hear anything. He's risen indeed. There, I heard it. Yeah, you're all saying it from home. So you guys, this is so great. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get into worship. Jesus, we just thank you. We just, we praise you. We glorify your name. We are so grateful for what you've done. We come to you first and say, thank you, Jesus for the work of the cross and how it impacts us all. Thank you for that you brought us into your life through resurrecting power. We thank you, God. We worship you right now. In your name we pray this. Amen. All right, let's worship.
Break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the light. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. You have done great
storms may wait for spring and every season from where I'm standing I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life and I see your promises in Fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak. The fear may come, the fear will leave. You lead my heart to victory. You are my strength and you always will be Sing it out I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my I 
Yes, I do, Lord. I see your promises in fulfillment all of my life, all of my life. What a powerful song, so special. Hey, we're going to just stay in this place and worship. We have such an amazing and powerful testimony we want to show you of some people in our church that God was just so faithful with in this past year. So I really hope you enjoyed it. I know you will, then we're going to get straight back into worship. So enjoy this testimony. Hi, everyone. My name is Teresa. Um, I have been at the CRCF church for a little bit over two years ago. I have a young family, my husband and two kids. They are two and four. Um, and last year was just a... Uh, uh, I guess a challenging year for everyone, especially for myself. Um, back in March, when COVID first hit, on the same week, I started having a fever. So I finally got a blood test done. Um, and um, on the same night that I got my blood test, I got this call from a life lab doctor. Basically, he told me my results are extremely abnormal. And he told me to um, going to the emergency right away. And of course, a few hours after I arrived, a doctor came by and he told me, although they don't know exactly what it is yet, it's most likely to be blood cancer. The next morning, they finally decided to um, uh, do the bone marrow biopsy for me, which, is, which we did, and it is a confirmation of what I had. It is leukemia, um, and it is uh, kind of a, like, rare form of leukemia, also high risk. Um, so with that being said, it transferred me to a VGH right away and we started my chemotherapy there three days later. It happens to be on my birthday. Um, and I stayed there for uh, four weeks. So I was just there by myself for weeks. But what is amazing is that um, when I first got diagnosed and I got transferred, um, I talked to Nikki from our church about it. And she told me, Charlie from our church actually works as a nurse in VGH leukemia unit. Um, so I work on the bone marrow transplant unit at VGH. I'm a nurse there. Um, and we give uh, high dose chemotherapy and give our patients uh, bone marrow transplants uh, as well as like a blood transfusion, but it's basically cells. Um, when they have things like leukemia, lymphoma, um, and blood disorders. I met Teresa, we were sat at the same table. Um, it was just us, just myself and Teresa and her husband. Um, and we hit it off, she has boys, I have boys. Um, and then I think it was literally a few weeks later that I got a message saying that she was admitted, or she was gonna be admitted into the unit I work on because um, she'd been diagnosed with leukemia. I just kind of messaged her and said, I'm here, whatever you need. Um, and that was it, really. And I would just go and sit with her, you know, if she wanted me to pray for her and just hold her hand. I had my very first roommate um, after a few weeks. Um, they switched me into a double room. Um, and I met this uh, lady. She's very nice and sweet. And uh, of course, my, my first reaction when I um, meet people in the hospital, it's like, especially patients, because I know what they have gone through. Um, my first thing was that, okay, I got to share the gospel with her. 
So I started sharing my own story a little bit. We spend a lot of time chatting together, so I still try to share a little bit with her every every day. Um, and I know there was one time that she was very um, upset. My name is Susan, and I'm on staff at Caribou Road Church. From there, I was going home. And when I got in the car, there was a text from my middle sister, Penny, and it said, are you at home? And immediately, I knew something was wrong. And uh, I said, no, but I'm on my way. And she just said, call me as soon as you get home. And so when I called her when I got home, uh, she said to me, my oldest sister, Steph, is 10 years older than me. And Penny said, uh, Stephanie's gone into emergency and she has acute myeloid leukemia. One of the conversations with Stephanie, she said that, well, all the nurses are telling me I'm getting a, a new roommate and I'm going to love my new roommate because she's a young woman. She's just full of life and she's, she's always positive and she's just great. You'll love her. We all love her. Sometime in the summer, I can't remember, I think it was June or July, I got this phone call from Susan in our church. I didn't know her. Um, I thought it was one of those, how are you doing call from the church. Um, so yeah, so I said hi. And all of a sudden she's like, yeah, it's a little personal. Do you have some time to talk? I called Teresa. I wasn't sure if I just thought, just you never know, I thought I would pray for her and, you know, do whatever I could for her. And so when I called and said, and I, I shared who I was and that I worked at the church and I said, you were in VGH and you have leukemia. And she talked about that. And then I said, do you know Stephanie? And she said, Stephanie. And I knew, and we both knew that she, we go to the same church, we never met. God put her in the room, answered my prayer, the church's prayer. One of the days where I called Steph, she said, after she had had her first round of chemo, she was going to have tests in the morning. and. Teresa had, was sharing the room, had gone to use the washroom and she was there, noticed Stephanie awake and lovingly had <laughs> asked her, asked Steph, are you okay? Because you're usually asleep well in the night. And Stephanie told her that she was worried about the test results in the morning, her first chemo test results that they were going to be good, if they were going to be good. And she told me the story and she said, she, she walked over to me and looked me in the eyes and said, of course they are. And she put her hand on my arm and she said, I just closed my eyes and I went to sleep and I slept all night. I was so thankful that God sent an angel into my sister's room. So yeah, God just it was so amazing. He like how he uses people <laughs> and he really had a bigger plan behind everything. And I was like, wow, yeah, if, if I didn't come to CRCF two years ago, I wouldn't have met Charlie. I wouldn't have found out um, that me talking about the gospel to someone would have an impact on me will have such a big impact on her. Because of the high risk that my kind of leukemia uh, is, um, from the beginning they told me it would be better for me to have a stem cell transplant, like a bone marrow transplant, in, in order um, for me to be in full remission. Uh, but it would be hard for me to find a donor. All right, so like it's in the, it's in God's hand. So we just kept praying. I don't know what's going to happen, whether I'm going to go through a I'm going to find a donor or I'm going to go through like ongoing chemotherapy. I was diagnosed on April 1st, like April Fool's Day. <laughs> and mid-May, they gave me a call and they said they found me a donor. It's, and it is a 10 out of 10 match. So that's like less than two months that they already found me a donor. At the end of July, I had my transplant done. 
Um, yeah, that was just crazy. During my transplant, there was like there was really tough moments that I felt really weak, um, physically and also spiritually. I, I knew it during the transplant process that I felt the fear. I felt being so close actually to death. Um, and what's amazing is when I read the scripture, before Jesus went on the cross, he actually prayed to God, prayed to his heavenly father to take this cup away from him. Like, I was like, wow, you know, God is not like judging me from high above. He was here, like he had the same kind of fear that I am experiencing. Like he was in my shoe and he knows exactly how I'm feeling at this moment. That was just really comforting to me, <laughs> like not feeling judged and know it's okay to be fearful and knowing that he's right here with me. And I am in 100% remission, so complete remission. Blood test results I just had was again fabulous. <laughs> Everything, my blood counts were, were really good. Um, praise the Lord. Whatever situation you are in right now, whether you're happy with life or you're busy with life or you're upset with certain things or you feel really restrained with COVID, you feel like you've lost your freedom or um, yeah, whatever situation you're in, um, I would just say just connect with God. Like He's really, He's the only thing that could satisfy our uh, us. You don't know what you're going to encounter tomorrow, to be honest with you. Like, that's how I felt. I never expected myself to go through this at this age. But it, it happened. And I'm so thankful that I knew Jesus. Like, there was someone for me to lean on to, for me to get help from. Um, because I knew him and I knew who he was, I knew what he's done, and I knew I, I could connect with him. So wherever you are in life, just don't lose that connection if you're already connected with him and connect with him more <laughs> if you can. And if you don't know him yet, I do invite you to come to know Jesus because he is so good. He, like I said, he's not judging us from high above. He was in our shoes. He experienced everything that we are experiencing in life. Wow, what an incredible testimony. It's so easy to say in that situation, wow, what a small world that you guys were all really, really interconnected in that situation. And it's pretty obvious that God's gentle and beautiful hands were at work accomplishing his purposes. Wow, amazing. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, we're going to play a new song this morning uh, just on that theme. So would you just join us as we worship? Weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. No, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord well, I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, There's power in the mighty name of Jesus Every war he wages he will win And I'm not backing down from any giants It's 
Let's just stay in prayer right now, church. Those words are so powerful. How God comes and he takes situations. He takes circumstances that were meant for evil, that were meant to maybe take away from our lives, that were maybe meant to bring us down, and then he works. And he turns it around. And he makes it for his glory. So I wonder if we, we can just pray together. I want to pray for you. If you're in situations, you're in a circumstance where you've, you felt like it is not the way it's supposed to be. It's not time to focus on what, it, what was lost, what was taken away and give in, maybe tap out. Today's about celebrating the resurrection and the power in that. 
and that Jesus came and he turned everything around and he made it personal for us so that we can access the Father. So right now, let's pray. Let's, let's just, as we think about that, we think about these words, that we have victory through Jesus. So God, I pray for everyone right now. We think of the things that were lost. We think of the things that were, maybe weren't supposed to be the way they are right now, but we don't want to focus on that. We want to look to you because you come and you turn situations around. You bring victory in those situations by your power, by what you did on the cross. I pray for anyone who's just feeling that, feeling low. I pray you come and bring encouragement. You come and move in power in their lives. You come and turn things around, I pray in Jesus' name. We thank you for that, Jesus. We praise you. We think of you. We look to you right now. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. So good. Well, hey, how good is it to be back in the worship center? I know you're actually not here. I generally say I miss you guys here. I wish you were all right here. I was talking to you in person, but we're doing as much as we can for what we have. But man, let's get a, can we just get a wide shot of this stage and how, how amazing it looks? I'm going to call Pastor Paul on here too. going to have a lot of things move around, but look at this. We're so, we're so excited. We're so proud of how it all came out. Paul, what do you think of this? I uh, just Incredible. Yeah, yeah. I was so excited about it. Of course, I don't know, on camera, it looks amazing. Yeah. But in, 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 in here, it's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. And we don't want to make people too jealous. No. We don't want to make people too jealous because you are going to get back in here. Yeah. But we're just, we just want to say a big thank you. Can I give yeah. a couple thank yeah. yous? Like this, even doing live stream and being in here. And if you're new to our church, you're going to hear some names you don't know, but that's okay. I just first want to thank, there was a team that came and built this set out, the backdrop, and Rich was in charge of that, Rich, who goes to our church, and he is just one of the most phenomenal, talented, jack-of-all-trades type guys, but Ever so gifted, and su such a good heart, and yeah. he, with Rob and Craig and Carrie, yeah. came and built this. Then we have an awesome production crew, Colors and Shapes, and they were here, and Chris was just, was here with us, and they did a, like, this is all their lighting, and they just did a phenomenal job. Andre, who runs the sound, he makes the sound really good. He, he, uh, he makes the band, yeah. the band is really good, but he makes he them makes sound even better. He makes us look good. He makes, yes. So, Andre, <laughs> the biggest thanks to you. And then our team, you don't see them. No. But Ellie behind the camera is yeah. in charge of this. Yeah. Duffy, Remy, yeah. James. And Julia, yeah. all this amazing team that pulled yeah. this off. We have, we have so many people here making this happen that one day a guy came, he thought church was actually on, and he came through. Yeah, we said, no, no, this no, is no. just our production crew. Do you know how to handle a camera? No, yeah, I don't. No, no you, you're going to go. You can't be in here. So, yeah, we are, we are just, we're just so proud of everyone. Yeah. I just want to say thanks to everyone who's doing this. Now, isn't it a beautiful day today? Man, happy Easter oh, again gosh. to everyone. Yeah, just fantastic. And what a great testimony from Teresa. Oh, man. Uh, and you know what? Um, your word, what I'm going to share this morning, you summed up my whole message in just a few I'm minutes. I'm sorry. That's perfect. Because okay. when God's going to say something, he doesn't say it once because we don't get it the first right. time. Yeah. He has to say it two or three times. I just feel like this mm. resurrection season, I know it's been a rough year for everybody. I mean, some of you have actually thrived in it, but for most, it's been yeah. a lot of challenges along the way. But boy, this day, don't we love Resurrection Sunday because there's just yeah. so much hope and in it. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And that's what we're here for. The same Celebrate. Yeah. And church, we want to thank you just for journeying with us. Yeah, that'd be For amazing. being a part of this. Yeah. For tracking with us, for yeah. being faithful with us. It means so much. Yeah. And even what some of you text or call just means yeah. so much to us. Yeah. And, and we did the drive through yesterday, our oh, Easter drive through. Crazy. I don't know how many cars, it was between 60 and 80 cars came yeah. through our church parking lot. And uh, Mike Perks is my hero. He's probably the, yeah. the pastor. Mike's one of the best event runners I've ever been a part of. He leads the team so well. Mike's here. He just isn't even looking at me. But he's the best. And we just, we're so thankful that we yeah. got to see you guys yeah. in this season. And we're looking, we're just looking forward. I, I feel like there's that hope is beginning to be birthed. Yeah. So, yeah. Gosh. Looking forward to new yeah. things. And we're, we're launching Alpha again. Yeah. We just yeah. did a, had a great Alpha season. We're launching that again in yeah. just a couple weeks here. We just can't wait. We can't wait for all the awesome good things, things that God is going to yeah. continue to do. So, 
So, well, uh, I'm going to get out of the yeah, stage now. Yeah, let's go into the okay. word. And uh, thank you, Landry. Thank you for everything you're doing as well. Oh, it's a privilege. Yeah, yeah have fun. But a quick, quick question. Yeah, talk to me. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. Is this a Canadian thing? Okay. Do you? Because I'm, I'm Canadian, but I was raised in New Zealand. Do you like hot cross buns? Uh, I mean, no, <laughs> I don't like raisins in it, but. I like That's the, what I find. I like the chocolate of, ones. A lot of people don't like them. Right. Yeah. Is this yeah. a part of your sermon? No, or? it had nothing to do with it. Okay, I'm just great. intrigued to know whether you... <laughs> okay. Uh, Enjoy. Yeah, very good. Uh, you probably like waffles with maple syrup. Is that correct? <laughs> you know what? We're going to pray, and then we're going to go into the Word. Um, uh, God is just... Happy Easter to everybody. First of all, from myself and from my family. Happy, happy Easter. Christ is risen. And uh, we're just so thankful for all that that means. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. But we want blessings upon you, blessings upon your family. And I'm thankful what God has taken you through. And I'm thankful that you're standing strong. And I'm thankful that in your heart, hope is rising. So fantastic. So listen, oh Jesus, just bless every person watching this morning. Bless every home. A whole year, Father. Lord, bless their homes, bless their families, bless them individually for those who are by themselves. Let the grace of this season be upon every single person. In Jesus' beautiful name, amen. Hey, we're going to continue um, and finish up the series we've been doing. And we've been looking at the sayings of Jesus in the Gospel of John. And Jesus would said seven sayings where he started by saying, I am. And I want to look at the last one today because the last one, we've saved it for the last one because it, it just is about Resurrection Sunday. The last time when Jesus made a, a statement about who he was, he said these words. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me or she who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Somebody say amen to that. Those who believe in me, they will never die. Do you believe this? That's the question we're going to look at this morning. Do you believe this? Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? That's a beautiful story. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go through the story when Jesus got to the point and made the statement because there's a whole lead up to it. It's not just uh, he says it in a random place. There's an amazing story. So I want to, if you don't know the story, no problem. I'm going to take you through and you're going to be really enjoy it. And we're just going to build up to this incredible um, claim by Jesus that he is the source of resurrection life. I mean, that's an amazing claim. So let's go through it. So the story starts that leads up to the statement by Jesus. It's found in John chapter 11, the Gospel of John chapter 11. And it starts, and I'll read it off. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. And he was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and his sister Martha. And this Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who had poured perfume on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. It was an amazing time when she did that. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love, he is sick. Now I want you to get what's going on here. Jesus is away ministering, about a day's journey from this town called Bethany where this family lives. And Lazarus gets sick. And it seems like, obviously, it's a very serious sickness. It's like a Teresa in the testimony kind of sickness that we just heard. It's a sickness that people realize is a sickness that could end up with the person dying. And so the sisters send word to Jesus. Now, what I love about the way they, way are, they ask Jesus, do you notice? They actually don't ask. It's, a, it's a, an ask that you ask when you're not asking, but you are asking. You ever done one of those? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. notice how they say it. They say, they say, Lord, the one you love is sick. So it's an hour's, uh, sorry, day's journey away, and they come to Jesus. They send a messenger to Jesus and say, hey, Lord, you know the one you love? You know the one who's like, he's like your best friend? Um, and, and, and do you remember he's the one that, 
His sister, she's the one that poured the perfume on your feet, that really, 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 really expensive perfume on your feet, and she washed your feet. And her other sister, Martha, you remember her? She's the one that cooks for you every time you come to Bethany in Jerusalem. So basically they say to them, "Um, Jesus, we're not telling you what to do, but the one you love and the one that the people that have put so much into your ministry, he's sick and... Right? You ever had that? I sometimes, you know, you get calls. I, I have people in the church who um, I count them. I consider them still as my guides, even though uh, I, I've been in the ministry for a long time. And they'll call me and they'll go, Pastor, so-and-so is sick. And when they say that to me, I go, are they asking me? Are they telling me that i got to go visit them? And they say, what am I meant to be doing here? <laughs> and say, so I go, well, how sick are they? Well, Pastor, I'm not saying what you need to do because you're the pastor, but they are sick. And you, <laughs> okay, you're telling me that I need to get out. And that's what they're doing with Jesus. They are saying to Jesus, he's sick, but what they're really saying is, and you need to do something about it. And I think that's okay, isn't it? When we go into life situations, I think that one of the promises of Scripture is that we as friends of God, as people who God has made himself our Heavenly Father, it's okay to go to him with all these different things that we have in life and bring them before the Lord. I love that about the gospel. Our God is not far away. He is close. He is our Heavenly Father. And we can have boldness to come and lay our request for those things in our life. If you don't know this, you can boldly come and bring your request before God. I think the only mistake they made is they had an assumption in their mind that when they asked, God was going to respond in a certain way. That God was going to do things specifically how they wanted them to be done. Now we do that sometimes, don't we? we, we my wife and I, we, we have the most amazing relationship. But it's taken us many years to uh, flow in the kitchen. Primarily because I have no idea what I'm doing. But one thing I've learned is that my wife, she gets a little bit irritated with me because I undo the dishwasher. Every morning, one of my roles is to take all the dishes out of the dishwasher. But there's often things in the dishwasher that are not a regular shape, you know, like a plate. <laughs> they, they are something that is not a regular size or shape. And so what I do is I just pull them all up and put them on the drying rack. And she comes down late and goes, what are you doing? You, you were meant to unload and put everything away. And I go, honey, you're very specific about where things go. And I don't want to get into trouble. So I'm just going to put them on the dish rack because I don't want to interfere with the way that you're going to do things. When they ask Jesus to come and heal, do you notice, and you'll see in the story, they had a very specific way they thought Jesus should do it. He should come now. He should come quickly. He should get there. He should heal Lazarus. It should be done their way, on their time, in their, on their timing, and just exactly how they think it should be done. They were very specific. You know, when we ask God to work in our lives, we just got to be careful. God is faithful. Amen. God, when we come to him with his request through Jesus Christ, he hears our prayers. But just be careful that we don't think that there's a certain way he's got to do it. God is faithful. You watch the story of Teresa. One would expect that it would have been a healing that would have healed her. But God had her on a journey for a certain purpose. Other things were accomplished on that journey. God's got you on a journey. He's working in your life. But he may not be working the way that you particularly expect him to be able to work. Let's read on. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son might be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and his sister. They, they affirm this. They affirm that Jesus loved, but he had a plan. He was going to do it a very specific way. He loved Martha. He loved the sister. He loves Lazarus. But when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed two more days where he was. Which when you find out later in the story, meant that Lazarus died. He passed away in that time of waiting. Jesus' his own ones do it. But notice what he says here. And this is something that's really important. What Pastor Landry struck on before. He said, listen, I'm not going to go because God wants to glorify me and he wants to glorify himself. One of the reasons Jesus stayed is he wanted the size of the miracle to be bigger than it was before. If he had gone, he was going to do a healing. Lazarus would be raised. It'd be awesome. Everybody would love to have seen it. But Jesus said, I am going to wait, and actually Lazarus is going to die. 
And then I'm going to come and I'm going to resurrect Lazarus. And the glory of God is going to be bigger than it's ever been before. I want to tell you something about your heavenly father. He delights in the impossible. He delights doing things that, that uh, he, he delights in just holding off a little bit longer to make the miracle just a little bit bigger. Remember Moses crossing the Red Sea? You know, in places on the Red Sea, it's only a few inches deep, but God didn't take them through the few inches. He took them right into the middle of it, and he got the enemy surrounded them on the backside, the water on the front side. I mean, it's like a big setup because God delights in the impossible. Because when we see God move in a powerful way, And it's very real to us. And we're very desperate for us. It opens our minds to see the wonders of God. Our understanding of God for most people is too small. When we talk about God, it's it's an inferior, uh, distant concept of some kind of spiritual being. And Jesus said, God wants to glorify himself to all. He wants to blow your minds. He wants to blow your minds so that you can see the greatness of God working in your lives. I, 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 I love what, uh, have you noticed when you pray? This, you notice this when you pray for things. I, like I notice that when I pray for an answer for prayer and God answers quickly, I quickly forget that God answered the prayer. Have you noticed that? But have you noticed that when you go through a really difficult time, like Teresa, and you keep praying daily again and again over that situation, and you really sow into that situation in prayer, when God answers that prayer, it sticks with you forever. You remember it because you, you, you see the hand of God more clearly. And I think that's what God, Jesus wants to do here. And that's what Jesus is doing in your life. My friend, if you're not seeing the answer to your prayers straight away, do not stop. Keep pressing in because God wants to glorify himself. He wants to reveal to you how much he loves you, how powerful he is in the midst of your circumstance. Let's read on. And Jesus, then, they said to his, then he said to his disciples after those two days, right, now let's go. So Lazarus is dead, and now he's saying, let's go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they say, a short time ago, the Jews were trying to kill you, and where Bethany was, there were people against Jesus, so going back to that area of the country was very dangerous for Jesus. There are Jews there trying to stone you, and yet you're going back there. And I love Jesus' answer. He said, are there not 12 hours of daylight? A man who walks by day will not stumble, for he sees this world's light. It is when he walks by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. So so this is kind of a cryptic thing. It's like, I'm sure the disciples are going like, what? What are you even talking about? Like, one moment you're saying we're going. The next moment you're saying we're not going. The next moment you're saying he's sleeping. The next moment you're saying he's way. No, you're saying you're walking in the darkness and walking like, like, Jesus, speak plainly. We need to understand what you're talking about. (laughs) He said, listen, in 12 hours we will walk in light and then we'll walk in darkness. What Jesus was meaning that is it's not my time to be arrested and, and, and crucified. We're walking in the light still. So We can go to Bethany, we're going to be okay. But he was saying something much deeper. He was basically saying to the disciples, guys, the problem is that you stumble through your life in darkness. Man, you just like, you got a torch and the batteries are almost out. Trying to get that torch to work. (laughs) You know, (laughs) change them around, try and get it. Because you're not seeing life properly. You're seeing everything you do through human understanding. And God wants to, Jesus is saying, listen, you, I, I've got to do so. I've got to reveal to you the glory. I've got to reveal to you the majesty of God. I need your understanding of who God is to be blown open so that you don't stumble around trying to do things in this life with a puny understanding of God. I need you to have a, an understanding that blows your mind open. So when you look at life, you're not trying to understand it from human understanding. You're understanding it from an enormity of a God who is with you, and it changes the way you think. It changes the way you approach situations. You talk to God like he's a genie who will help you out of your problems. But God, the Heavenly Father, is all-encompassing. 
And every decision you make, everything you do, I want you to see the enormity of your Father so that he is in everything that you do. So many of us, even as Christians, when we make decisions, we do not include God. We, 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 we think of God confined and restricted, but the God you serve and the God I serve, he is not restricted. He is the ruler of the universe. And when Jesus made his decision, he was making a decision based on this understanding of the unseen this understanding that God's purpose is like Teresa's story. Like if Teresa had fought, I just love her testimony. She stood strong, strong in Christ. And God used her in that situation to lead Susan's sister to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is phenomenal. Because she understood that God's purposes are greater than her purposes. And God is above all these things. And there is nothing impossible for God. So, so just every decision you make, do it in God's way. You know, there's a saying we often have, isn't there, in life. We, you hear it a lot. We say, you only live once. Have you ever, ever said that to somebody? I just want to warn you about that. Usually when somebody says, you only live once, they're about to do something really dumb. Have you noticed that? <laughs> when somebody says, well, you only live once. That's when they're about to go and bungee jump. That's what they, well, you only live once. Yay! That's when they go and put, you know, all their savings on, on, on some kind of crazy investment. Well, you only live once. That's when they, they get into a relationship they never got into. Well, well, you only live once. It's just like a phrase people make to kind of excuse crazy behavior. But I think that it affects all of us. The point is, is that even as believers, we so often understand everything we do life in a very temporal and a very natural understanding. But Jesus, he didn't. His whole approach to everything was entirely heavenly orientated because he understood the heavenly realm was way more real than the earthly realm. He understood the purposes of God were way more real than your purposes and my purposes. And Jesus was so powerful because he walked with a different perspective and reality. He knew God, his father, was real. And he did what his father asked him to do. And that's what he wants to do with us. He wants to blow us up a little bit so that we could begin to see who God is. Let's read on. After he had said this, he went to tell them. Our friend, again, he's going to talk cryptic and they're going to get so confused. He said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. <laughs> yeah, I love this. And then the disciples go, Lord, if he sleeps, that's good. <laughs> he's having a rest. Awesome. And Jesus had been speaking about his death. Jesus wasn't saying, he's saying no, guys, listen. Lazarus has actually died. I, I was trying to use metaphoric language. You just didn't get it. So let me just speak plainly to you. Lazarus has died, but for your sake, I'm glad because if I was not there, um, so I want you to believe. I, I'm glad that I wasn't there when Lazarus died because now a greater miracle is going to happen. Something that will blow your mind and change your way of thinking, guys. I've got to get you to start to see that this world is temporal and the world that you can't see is eternal and that you, you're trying to live this life by yourself and your natural energy and your heavenly father wants to, who, who's all around you. I've got to open your eyes somehow. So it's good Lazarus has died because we're going to go there. We're going to wake him and it's for you that we're doing this, not for Lazarus. He's happy where he is, but for you, I'm going to do this so that you mind would be blown open in this situation. We uh, had my wife's anniversary recently, uh, not anniversary, sorry, birthday, and we went downtown uh, to celebrate. We stayed a couple of nights in a hotel. We went out one night, my wife and I, for a meal, and uh, we liked to have a glass of wine with our meal, and the restaurant was giving half price off on the bottle, so we thought it was cheaper for us to buy the bottle and we can have it over the weekend. And so we bought this bottle, and um, I just love the name of the bottle. We didn't really choose it. The, the waiter did. And the name of the brand, Australian brand, it was called Punch in the Face. And I thought, that's, that's an interesting name for a bottle of wine. And then I realized how clever it was because we took the bottle home, and I, was about, and I said to my wife, we're about to have dinner, I said, honey, and instead of saying wine, I said, honey, would you like a punch in the face? I thought, oh, that's clever marketing. Somebody really thought that through really well. And, and that's, what I, well, that's what's going on here. It, 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 the resurrection, the power of resurrection it is something that you cannot skirt around. It is a punch in the face. It is, a, it is a thing that changes the whole perspective of a person on how this world works. 
We went swimming in the summer, and uh, my wife and I, we went up into the mountains and went into a coal glacial pond that had come off a waterfall. It looked beautiful. It just was gorgeous until you got in the water. It was so cold, I almost felt like my heart was going to stop. My wife was worried for me. It was so cold. It was like, ah! It was like I was taken into a different realm. This is what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, listen, I'm going to go. We're going to go. We're going to, Lazarus is dead. We're going to see Lazarus rise again. Why are we going to do this? It's not for Lazarus. It's for you. You need to see. I need you to have a punch in the face. I need you to have a shock. I need you to have a waking. I need you to understand the way you're looking at this world is, of, is not helping you. You're stumbling around. You're making decisions. You're trying this. You're going here. You're doing this. But you're, it's all, you're doing all of this because you have not yet got in your heart and understanding understanding that your heavenly Father loves you and He is all-powerful over the all things. There is nothing impossible for the God that you serve. And I need that to be so deep in you that you would trust Him 100% in everything you do. You don't trust Him because you don't see the glory of your Father. So I'm going to do a resurrection to just like get right to the bottom of it so you can just actually see the God that you serve. You know what? There's a, God loves you. God loves me. And there's a psalm that, that talks about this, about the depth of it. Many people talk about God, and we talk about God kind of, yeah, God loves me, God cares for me. But we, we, we don't grasp the depth of this. In Psalm 61, 16, I want you to read, hear the psalm. It's a beautiful psalm. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices my body also will rest securely. I, I like that. His heart is glad. His tongue rejoices. He's giving praises to God. His body is also at peace. He's relaxed. He's just in a great place. Why? Because he's had a revelation. He's seen something. He's grasped something that, that no matter what's going on around him, he's at peace. This is what he's grasped. Verse 10. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your faithful ones see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with the joy of your presence. Your eternal pleasures are at my right hand. What a powerful scripture. What he's saying here is, listen, as I live this life, I will fear no evil because I know this truth and this truth is deep in my heart. There is nowhere I can go from the love of God. Even when I go into the grave, even when I die, God's faithfulness to me has not stopped. Oh, come on now. This is unbelievable. In the old days, people thought God's faithfulness stopped when you die. But, but, but the prophet is saying, psalmist is saying, no, 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 no. He is so faithful that his hand, the hand of the heavenly father, even reaches into the grave. And for his beloved, for those he loves, he plucks them. He will not let them rot. He plucks them out of the grave back to resurrection life. If our God loves us so much and he's so powerful that even death cannot hide us from his love, <laughs> even death cannot hide us from the love of God. So that's why this guy says, I'm at peace. My tongue sing praise even in difficult times. My heart rejoices even in difficult times. I'm physically at peace. I rest well at night. Remember how Teresa prayed for Susan's sister and she felt the peace of God even in the midst of difficulties because I know there is nowhere I can go. There is no place I can be. I'm a beloved of God. I am loved for God. And even death itself has no reign over me because the God I serve has the power and is willing and is going to reach even into the grave and bring me to resurrection life. If you knew that this life is just so short compared to eternity, your life is just a flicker compared to eternity. I, I saw this picture, a space picture of the Voyager satellites that are now way, way deep, almost left the solar system uh, way out in deep space now. And they took a photo of Earth. You can't even see it. It's just one little dot amongst all the stars. We are, just, we are just one flick in the eternity of time. But because God loves us with an everlasting love and because he is the resurrection power and because the grave has no dominion over our heavenly father, this life is temporal and short, but eternity goes on forever. Therefore, we are secure to obey and trust and fully give our lives to our God because we know his love for us has no limits and nothing can stop him working in our lives. Hallelujah.
Let's read on. By the way, this text, Psalm 16, is actually a prophecy specifically about Jesus Christ. It's a prophecy specifically about Jesus Christ. Peter, in the book of Acts, when he preaches to the people, this is the prophecy he uses to talk about Jesus. He says, you guys, you didn't know who Jesus was. He did miracles. Some evil men amongst you arrested him and crucified him. But I want you to know this promise was for Jesus Christ. Because he was righteous, because he was without sin, the grave could not hold him. That's what I believe. I believe that so deeply, that Jesus, the grave could not hold Jesus. He was at rest even when he went to the cross. Even when he died on the cross, he relinquished his body into the hands of the Father. He obeyed even to death because he knew even in death, even in the impossible. Come on, remember what I told you. Our God is a God of the impossible. Even in the impossible, God would still work and bring about resurrection. And that's what this, this passage about Jesus Jesus, Jesus has not died. Lazarus, by the way, he died. It's really interesting, but in archaeology in Israel, there is actually a grave site that has the names Lazarus, Mary, and Martha on the tombstone with other family members, and they believe it's actually the tombstone of this family. That family died, but Jesus went to the grave. Come on now. And because he was without sin, Sin could no longer still, Lazarus got out, but there was still a rope on him that was pulling him back into the grave. But when Jesus came out of the grave, when his heavenly father reached into the grave and said, this is my righteous son, and pulled him out of the grave, Jesus is never going back. Jesus has conquered the grave. Jesus has overcome the grave. Jesus is victorious. Muhammad is in the grave. Buddha is in the grave. Other prophets and people, famous people from history are in the grave. But there is no grave for Jesus Christ. He is risen. He is the Son of God. He is living forever. And those who are in him, they also are receiving the resurrection life. Let's read on. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been put in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them at the loss of their brother. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. It's funny in this story, Martha is actually the real spiritual one. I love what she says. Uh, Get this first phrase. We're going to go over this again as we come towards the end. He says, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. We're going to go back over that in a few minutes. Because this comes up again and again in the story. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. (laughs) This woman has faith, right? She, 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 she She has faith. She has this real, no one else, I don't think anybody really expresses this. She says, I'm starting to see Jesus because I've seen you do amazing things in your earthly ministry. I've even seen you raise other people to the dead. I'm starting to see Jesus that nothing is impossible for you. So if you've been here, the situation would have got like it was, but even now, I'm still believing that actually you could do something. Jesus says, your brother will rise again. Now, now she wavers here. She just kind of pulls back a little bit. She said, Martha answered, I know he rise again in the resurrection day at the end. You know, what is faith? Faith is when you, your eyes are just open to the glory of God. That's all it is. Faith is just seeing God as who God is. When you get faith, it's not believing in God to do something. It's believing in God. It's believing in the enormity of God and the wonder of God, the glory of God, the goodness of God. And Martha almost had it. She, began to, she, was, she believed so much in Jesus. She'd seen him do so much. She, so she got to the point where she could even make the statement, you know what? He's dead, but anything is still possible. And then Jesus makes it really specific. He says, Lazarus is going to be raised up. I'm going to raise up Lazarus. And she says, well, I know, but that'll be in the day of resurrection. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. Martha, listen to me. And that's where he says these famous words. Martha, listen to me. I am not the resurrection of the future. I am not talking about the end times when you'll see resurrection. I am talking about the now. I'm talking about right now, Martha. I am the God in any situation. When you come to me, the impossible is possible. 
The, the dead can come alive. The incredible can. This is what he says. No, Martha, listen. He said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live. Hallelujah. Even though they die, and whoever lives and believes in me, they will never die. And I love his question to her. Martha, do you believe, Martha? And I think this is the prophetic word I felt God wanted to say to everybody. Do you believe that I am the resurrection? Now, not in the future. Now, do you believe that you need resurrection in situations in your life. You need resurrection in circumstances. You need new life to come inside you. you on your inside, you're torn up, beaten up. You've got sorrow and pain deep inside you. You don't know who God is. You, you're so lost. Do you believe that I can bring resurrection even on the inside of you? Do you believe that I can bring resurrection into your circumstances, into your situation? Martha, I am the resurrection, all resurrection, all new life, all new things come through me. I am the resurrection who gives life. Do you believe in me, Martha? Because if you believe in me, all things are possible. I am the resurrection. I love her answer. Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into this world. She got it. She got it. She understood that if you are going to go into the grave and you are going to overcome death itself and your heavenly father is going to raise you up to eternal life and you're going to live forever, this is evidence that you are not a prophet, you are not a good man, you are not a good teacher, you're not somebody who helps me when I'm in times of trouble. You are the Lord. You are the Christ. You are the Son of God. You are above creation. You are above death. You are above circumstances. You are above principalities. You are above my divorce. You are above my sickness. You are above my problems with my children. You are above every circumstances. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the resurrection power. I believe. I'm putting all my hope and trust in you. And I feel that so strongly this morning. What is God saying to some of you? It's time to believe. It's time to say, I believe that you are the resurrection, that you are the hope for my life, that you are the Christ who I would submit my life to. You are the Son of God who I will worship. I am the resurrection and the life. I want to just finish up by reading the rest of it. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary. The teacher is here, she said, and he's asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to Jesus. Now, Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at a place where Martha had told to meet him. And when the Jews, who had been with Mary from the house, comforted her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed also, supposing they were going to the tomb to mourn. So a big crowd's coming, which is awesome, because Jesus wants everybody to see what he's about to do. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, and I want you to hear, this is the same words that Martha started with. Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. That's twice. If only you had been here, this would not have happened. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Uh, where have they laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. I love that about Jesus. He wept. He feels our grief. He feels our pain. But he was also weeping because he knows we're so confused that our help is right there, but we refuse to reach out to that help, the resurrection life. He wept. And the Jews said, well, see how much he loved him. And listen again. But some of them said, could not he, have, he who has opened the eyes of the blind have also kept this man Lazarus from dying. If only he had. If only he had. I just really felt prophetically in my heart that this is a word that the Lord wanted to share with so many people today about the, the, the application of resurrection. We talk about resurrection as an event, but it's not just an event. It's a mind-changing reality. It's a change in the way we think about life. These three people who met Jesus all said, if only things had been different. 
If only I hadn't put all my money into that bad investment, I would be in a different place. If only I hadn't married that individual, I wouldn't have gone through all the pain and my life would be so much better. If only my children hadn't been born with this circumstance. If only this person hadn't done this to me in my life. I mean, I'm telling you, the list of if onlys, is, 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 it, it's infinite. It just goes on. Everybody, all of us have in our lives that, those words on the tip of our tongue, if only. But the thing about if only is it's giving power to the past. It's letting the past dictate your future and where you're going to. And there's a point in time when one gets a revelation of the power of God and the resurrection that that statement, if only, and regret and looking at the past and and thinking that your future is destroyed because of what has happened in the past, the promise of the resurrection, it's a mind-changing way of thinking. It is saying that it doesn't matter what has happened in the past for I am the resurrection and the life. I am the one who is the worker of the impossible. And today is a new day. Today is a new place of beginnings for you. Oh, I I think for many of us in our Christian lives, for many of us in our circumstances, it's so important that we get the shift in thinking. We as a people of God need to stop using the if only kind of thinking. We have to become a people that understand I serve a God who loves me, who promised in Psalm 16 that even if my body goes into decay, even if I'm in the grave, he can reach into the grave and he can bring me out of the grave. He can reach into my circumstances, into my tattered and broken life and he can reach in and bring something good out of it for his glory. He can work into my death. He can work into my problems. He can work into a a past that's ruined me. He can make me a new future for he is the resurrection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? We've got a testimony. I think we're going to show it. It's from our baptism on Sunday, uh, Friday, Good Friday. We had some amazing baptisms, all resurrection baptisms. But here is a beautiful one. Let's just watch this for a second and get encouraged with the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. I'm Doreen, and I grew up in Edmonton, Alberta, with my mom and dad, my older sister, and my two younger brothers. As far back as I can remember, I've always been Christian and raised in the faith of God. For the most part, I was pretty good and well behaved as a child. When I became a young adult, things changed. I guess I started to come out of my shell and I started to feel more independent. So I strayed off the path, the one I believe God wanted me to be on. In my 20s, I did many things that I'm not proud of that brought on a lot of pain. In my 30s, I had two beautiful girls who are just extraordinary. I also got divorced and I felt I disappointed many people, my children especially, and I felt I let God down. I'm into my 40s now and I still have done things that I'm not proud of. And it it wasn't until quite recently when I had a conversation with a coworker about Christianity that I was introduced to Caribou Road Christian Fellowship. I started to watch the online church services and the messages just rang so clear to me. And then I was introduced to Alpha and uncertain at first, but I decided to jump in and take the course and I'm really glad that I did. On this spiritual journey, it has been overwhelming with how I've been touched with inspiring words, warm hearts and wonderful support. I realized that all this time, what I was missing was my relationship with God. I want to be baptized because I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want a new life, experiencing God's love and grace always. I'm proud and honored that I can share that moment with my family and friends. I'm happy and just forever grateful. Resurrection power, wow. He is able to reach in any circumstance, not about the past. It's about now, not even about the future. It's about now. He is the resurrection. I want to finish.
by reading the end of the story of Lazarus when he's brought out of the grave. And I want you to imagine you a Lazarus in this grave. I want to read this, and when Jesus commands Lazarus to come out, I want you to hear the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, calling out to you and saying, it's time to rise up. I've done it for you. I've gone ahead of you. Hallelujah. Luke's with me. The team's going to build up here with worship. We're going to get ready. We're going to come and praise God and give thanks for what he's done. Are you ready? Here we go. This is about you. This is what Jesus is saying to you. He is the resurrection of life. Jesus once moved. Sorry again. Let me start again. Jesus once more deeply moved came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance just like the one he was in. Take it away. Take it away, he said. Take away the stone. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a really bad odor. He's been there for four days. Impossible for him to come alive again. And Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked up and said, Father, thank you that you have heard me I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Hallelujah. And when he said this, Jesus called out, and this is for every single person this morning. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out of the grave in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And the dead man came out. His hands and his feet were wrapped with strips of linen and cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes, take off the past, take off the hindrances, take off the bondages, take off the sins, take off the hurts, take off the pain. It's Resurrection Sunday. It's the day that God sets you free. It's the day that God heals you. It's the day that nothing is impossible for He has risen. Let's worship our Lord this morning. Hallelujah. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on the curse of the tree. Body bound, drenched in tears, laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone inside.
he shall return in robes of white the blazing sun shall pierce the night and I God, we praise you. Thank you so much for the power and resurrection. God, we just choose. We choose to believe. We choose to step in. We choose to make that a priority for our life. Walking in the perspective shift. God, come and meet with us again afresh. Come and meet with us anew. And let this next season be a season where we're walking in the power of the resurrection that we're living a life that reflects what you did for us, that we don't let circumstances take us to a a place in the past, but we're living, as Pastor Paul preached, in the power of your resurrection now. So God, we worship you, we thank you, we praise you. God, and let today just continue to be a day and ongoing that we understand in a further and deeper way what you did for us on the cross and what it means for us and our families and our friends. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, hey, church and friends and family or people watching for the first time, we are so glad you came today. Thank you for joining us. Happy Easter to you, and I hope you have a great and wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you next Sunday at 9.30. Take care.